Hey everybody, welcome to Vacuum Wars and to my review of the brand new Roborock S7 robot vacuum. Roborock has become one of the biggest players in the industry and their new S7 has been really anticipated by a lot of people. I put mine through all kinds of tests this week to see if it lived up to the hype and I have to say there were some big upgrades that I think are potential game changers. So links in the description and let's get started. When I first heard about the S7, I thought the story was going to be about the newly designed mopping system and the potential compatibility with the not yet released auto empty dock system, both of which I'll talk about later. But other than that, I didn't see much else to distinguish the S7 over the S6 or even the S5 Max. So I was surprised to find during the various tests that another less prominent upgrade was actually the big story with the S7 in my opinion, which is the newly designed brush housing and brush, which I think makes the S7 the best cleaning robot vacuum that Roborock has ever made. But to appreciate that, let's talk about the power. In the various power tests, I was kind of disappointed. I got lower than average numbers on the S7 in both the suction and airflow tests. In fact, it was the lowest scores I had seen on a Roborock period. So I was surprised when in the carpet deep clean test where I embed sand into medium pile carpet and weigh the bins after a five minute run, it did better than any Roborock I had seen. And then again in the crevice pickup test, it was much better than any other Roborock. Take a look at the S7 versus the S6. It's just a night and day difference. The reason for all these anomalies is the new brush and brush housing system, which allows for multiple planes of movement. The primary result being that the brush and housing are able to form to the floor surface better, which creates a better seal on the floor. The older design of the housing moved a little bit, but not nearly as much as with the S7. Roborock has also upgraded its tried and true brush design to make use of this system. All that to say, it doesn't need much raw power to generate a lot of suction if it can create such a good seal. I've always thought that Roborocks were great at debris pickup on both hard floors and carpet, but this new system seems to be even better. In combination with its one side brush, it efficiently picked up all the debris types and sizes we threw at it, but I was especially impressed with the hard floor heavy debris kitty litter test, where I typically test it in low power and then again in high power to see the difference, but in this case it did so well in the low power test that I didn't even need to run the high power test. All that to say that in general I think the Roborock S7 is probably the best Roborock at pure debris pickup as well, and that's really saying something since I already really liked Roborocks in terms of their pickup. Like most premium Roborocks, the S7 is a LiDAR-based smart navigation robot vacuum, which means it uses a top-mounted spinning invisible laser to map out your home, and it cleans in more or less straight lines. It mapped both the studio and my house on the first attempt, and it didn't get stuck or have any major issues. Its coverage on both the small and large room tests were nearly perfect, with good detail around the chair legs, etc. The S7 does not have the front mounted cameras for obstacle avoidance that we saw with the S6 Max V. Instead, it has just the standard infrared sensors, but I didn't find myself missing the AI obstacle avoidance in the test at my home, but I also wasn't really testing for that. The accuracy of the LiDAR was further seen in the various map features, like my personal favorite, the no-go zones, where you can draw lines or boxes on the map in the app to keep the robot from going where you don't want it to go. The app has pretty much everything you would want in a modern smart robot. You can divide and name areas on the map, which helps for features like room cleaning or area cleaning. You have a lot of control over the robot's power and mop speed. There's also no mop lines, which are like no-go lines, but for mops. And the scheduling feature is very in-depth with more than the average perimeters to choose from. Also, the robot has a total of four maps it can remember, like for different floors in your house, which is again, better than average. The new mop system is pretty interesting. It works by filling the tank with water and attaching the specially designed washable microfiber pad to the bottom of the robot and it basically mops as it vacuums. The big difference from previous versions is that number one, there is a metal lever on the bottom that vibrates the mopping pad back and forth with the idea being to make it better at picking up stuck on debris. And number two, the entire mopping plate in the back will automatically rise up off the floor when it's vacuuming carpet and when it's docking. This is significant because for the first time you can just leave the mopping pad attached and have it vacuum the entire house and mop at the same time. Before you pretty much had to do separate runs for mopping and for carpet. Also, you would no longer need the pads that would attach to the charging dock for after mopping jobs because it rises up. It really is a game changer. In the mopping tests I did, I used dried on coffee, grape juice, and V8 juice and found that it was one of the better runs I had seen. It picked up those tough dried on stains really well. I would say it was better than the Roborock S6 Max V, but not by a huge amount, but it was certainly
certainly better than the vast majority of robot vacuum mop combos. One of the big reasons to get the S7 in my opinion is that it will eventually be compatible with the auto empty bin system that Rebel Rock has teased but not really revealed much about. I honestly have no idea how it's going to work since I can't see anything on the robot that could be compatible with the bin but I'm sure they have it all figured out. But because I think that those auto empty bins are really cool and basically the wave of the future, it would make me feel a lot better about an S7 purchase knowing that it's supposed to have that option very soon. The only real downside I noticed during the test was with hair tangles. As I alluded to earlier, Roborock has redesigned the brush for the S7. The brush style that all previous models used were some of the best I had seen with regard to resisting hair tangles, so it was a bit of a shame that with this new brush design it was about average, maybe even a little below average with hair tangles. Not a huge deal, but worth mentioning. So my takeaway is that the new S7 is one of the more genuinely useful upgrades from Roborock since the S5. The new brush housing makes it one of the best debris pickup vacuums for hard floors and carpets, even on lower power settings. The new mop system is an actual game changer for being able to mop and vacuum the entire house on one run, and all of that with the same tried and tested navigation and software features that I think have made Roborock such a success. Links in the description, and you can compare the official specs of the S7 with other Roborocks or any other robot vacuum at our comparison website in the description as well. Be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave, and thanks for watching.